Good afternoon friends, Miss Christina here and today I'm going to read you a story. The Delfino Detectives, written by Mary B, illustrated by Jennifer Bartlett. Look, William, said Laura, as she and her brother sat down on the front porch with their peanut butter and banana sandwiches. There's a police car next door at Mrs. Watson's. I'm going to find out what's going on. Wait, Laura, called William. You can't just ring the doorbell and say, hello, officer, Laura Delfino here. What seems to be the problem? Of course I can't, said Laura. But at that moment, Mrs. Watson's front door opened and out stepped the police officer. Laura, William, and their cat Sadie had hardly entered Mrs. Watson's yard when they were ambushed by Mrs. Watson's yipping, yapping miniature pincher named Prince. Sadie was off like a shot and up a nearby tree, so Prince had to settle for Laura and William. But something was wrong. Prince, whose coat was normally handsome, dark and sleek, sported strange pink spots all over. The spots weren't soft like the rest of Prince's coat. What happened, Prince? asked William. When the officer pulled away, Mrs. Watson stepped out into her yard. Prince, you come back here. I'm sorry, he just got away from me. But what happened? asked Laura. He's been vandalized. When I let him out this morning, somebody painted my poor pookie pink. Oh my, and that policeman was no help at all. He just asked me a few questions and went on his way. Suddenly, Prince ran, growling to the base of Mrs. Watson's hickory tree and stood yipping and jumping at the air. Don't worry, Mrs. Watson, said Laura. William and I will help you. Oh, do you think you could? asked Miss Watson. It certainly would ease my mind. Delfino detectives, at your service, said Laura. We won't rest until we've solved your case. Oh, thank you. I'm most grateful. Come, Prince, she demanded. He didn't, of course, so William collected the wriggly dog and carried him to her. Come, Pookie, she said. Let's see if we can get you cleaned up. Maybe some mineral spirits. She took Prince inside. The squirrel ran hurriedly down from the tree. William stood scowling at Laura. Any brainy ideas, detective? Maybe it was Mrs. Watson's yard man, she suggested. Or the mailman. Prince hates them both. Or maybe Adam next door. They don't seem like dog vandalizers to me, objected William. Got any better ideas? asked Laura, but William didn't. What do you think, Sadie? asked Laura. Meow, answered Sadie disinterestedly and walked away. I guess we should look around, said Laura. I'll take the front yard, you take the back. Laura checked the mailbox. It was empty. What could that mean? She checked the front porch. Nothing. She checked the driveway and garage. The lawnmower was in place. The grass looked like it hadn't been mowed in almost a week. William checked the back porch, garbage bin, and bird feeder. He went to check the shed, but it was locked. What could he be looking for? He didn't have a clue. Did you find anything? William asked Laura after returning to the front yard. The mailbox is suspiciously empty, Laura whispered. William rolled his eyes. So, she didn't get any mail. What now? The Delfino duo decided to go home, finish their snacks, and strategize. When their strategy got them no closer to solving the case, William and Laura decided to break from detective work and pass the soccer ball for a bit. William stopped the ball and paused. Is that Sadie at the back of Mrs. Watson's shed? Sadie crept along the ground ever so slowly, eyes fixed straight ahead. Who's she after? asked Laura. Mrs. Watson won't like it if she gets one of her birds. Here, kitty, William called. Sadie turned her ears to the sides and then back, all the while maintaining focus on the object of interest. We'd better check it out, said William. When William and Laura reached Sadie, they could see that it was no bird she was stalking. It was a big squirrel. The squirrel stood, tail flicking, regarding Sadie critically. You can't get that squirrel, said Laura, giggling. Let's go, William. Wait, said William. Don't you notice something strange? Laura looked and her mouth dropped open. Pink feet, 
At that moment, Sadie leapt at the squirrel. In a flash, he was across the grass, up the wall, and through a hole in the back of Mrs. Watson's shed. Sadie slunk away, annoyed by the whole situation. As they investigated more closely, the duo noticed the tiny pink footprints all around on the ground and down the shed wall. I think we found our man, said William. Let's talk to Mrs. Watson. Come in, dears, said Mrs. Watson loudly to be heard over Prince's yip-yapping. She opened the door and Prince, only slightly less pink than before, took off after Sadie, who was looking on. Oh, no, thank you, said William. We just wanted to ask some questions. Do you happen to have any pink paint in your shed? Asked Laura. Mrs. Watson thought. Maybe I do have some pink left from painting my powder room. Then was the shed open this morning by any chance? Asked William. No, she answered. I keep it locked to keep Prince out. That dog goes crazy in there. I don't know what he's after, but he gets in anyway. I think he dug a tunnel under that back wall. Can we check it out? Asked Laura. Why, of course answered Mrs. Watson. Let me get the key. Prince came running as Mrs. Watson pulled the shed door open and squeezed through before they could even begin to see inside. The open door told a story. There lay an open paint can on the ground surrounded by splashes of pink. Prince was yipping and jumping at the shelves from which the can had fallen. Mrs. Watson and the Delfino duo quickly identified the object of his contempt. On the very top shelf stood the guilty squirrel. He paused for only a moment, looking at his unwelcome spectators and flicking his tail nervously, before leaping up and out through the hole in the wall. That's how it happened, said William. Prince got into the shed after that squirrel. The squirrel, in his hurry to escape, knocked over your pink paint can. The lid came off, and Prince got a pretty splash of pink. I think I understand, said Mrs. Watson. But how did you know? We saw the culprit outside, answered Laura. Sadie found him. Pink feet. Mrs. Watson laughed out loud. Prince stood sulking, rather irritated that his squirrel had gotten away. Sadie, back down from her tree, appeared at the shed door. Seeing the cat, Prince took off with one sharp yip in robo mode. But before he could reach her, Sadie leapt gracefully onto the workbench, just out of his reach. Meow, she said with an air of superiority as Prince yapped and jumped helplessly below her. You two are quite the detectives, said Mrs. Watson, turning to William and Laura. Call us any time, said Laura. Delfino Detectives, at your service. The End Did you enjoy that story? Did you figure out what happened before it happened? Let me know. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye!